You're still watching Ways hashtag. Yes. What are you saying? What are you, what are you saying? saying? No, it's hashtag Waze. Waze. Hashtag Waze, yeah. All right, so today is National Chocolate Covered in Cherry Day. <laughs> yeah. What a day. What a day. In this America, I've learned so many sweet days in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that to observe this day, all you need to do is share some chocolates covered in cherry. Uh, sorry, share some cherry covered in chocolate, chocolate. with oh, your cherry friend. Cherry covered in, in chocolate. chocolate day, yeah. So wow. che you share it with your friends. I'd rather the other way around. Share some chocolate covered in cherry so I can take off the... Uh, oh, you eat the cherry and leave the chocolate. <laughs> Oh, well, no, no, I'll eat the chocolate. And but I think for, for the people that live in the U.S., you know. But this wasn't originally from the U.S., though. When I was reading the research, it's actually from, I can't remember the, the place now. But when they now took it, you know, when they take it, Trust, they, they own it. Like it never existed. <laughs> you know, they own it and they now gave it a day and all yes. of that. But it, the truth is, I said, when, I mean, from the month of December all the way, too many sweet things. Sweet These people are real sweet tooth. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, I was going to say, I've had enough chocolate this last few weeks to last me another quarter so are you sure uh, are you very are, sure are you trying to <laughs> tempt me <laughs> all right let's move on to what we found in the news all right nasa let's start with why me NASA. and it's the new year so start with me absolutely. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i got this from the international scene um it's from the scoop and the finnish prime minister the young lady who was recently Selected, 34-year-old, by the way, a.k.a. Ami. Yes, so. <laughs> Excuse me. Prime Minister of Finland, she has, her name is Sana Marin. She's called for a four-day week and six-hour long um, working day for her country. And this is something she's apparently pushed for prior when she was a prime uh, minister for communication and transport. Yeah. So now that she's prime minister, I think she's just decided that this is something I want to happen. And... It's something that resonates with me, reason being, I'm also one of the people that believe strongly in work-life balance, especially for mothers who, you know, have to handle the home front and also perform at work. So this is amazing. And she, her reason for this is a neighboring country, uh, um, Sweden, has actually tried and tested this in 2015. And they found that um, after two years, the results were very alarmingly um, impressive and impactful. Yeah. So increased productivity, healthier people, and in truth, it works for everybody, for the companies, for profitability, for the country in terms of GDP. You know, if productivity increases, then your GDP is improving and all of that. So fantastic um, uh, direction. And I'm wondering when Nigeria will follow suit. Are we even ready for it, you know, in a country where I don't know. It's almost like if you people don't feel like you're working enough if you haven't worked long. The if you haven't twin. stayed long, well, for long hours. Well, well, I think also it's the kind of people that work for the employees themselves. Have they done anything to earn that trust? But my question is, uh, but as it is now, if you're working long hours, are you getting the kind of result? Are you actually getting? You're the not I, I support you, but also it there, there also has more. to be a system to measure. So probably there's a measurement. You know, oh, it's definitely. Okay to have yeah. It will increase productivity. Absolutely. It will. I support uh, that. But are you not glowing now? <laughs> You've been on vacation. You're happy. <laughs> All right, let's move on, Akanimo. So what's your story? Okay, so for me, I have a, a, one that touches me, and it's quite disturbing. It's in The Guardian. It says, not all court orders need immediate compliance. Mm -hmm. And this was said by the Attorney General of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm -hmm. who also doubles as the Minister of Justice, wow. Abubakar Alami, a mm -hmm. Now, why, why this gets to me is that he maintains that, you know, once a judicial you know, pronouncement is passed, the government can choose whether or not to obey it Im immediately. That's what I get from it's here. It's very disturbing. It is very disturbing. So what's the hope? That means you cannot stand against the government. So even if you have something legit to say, you're not very sure that you will be It'll protected be okay. by the law of the land. Now, also telling me that the government is also above the law. And that's not very consoling no, for it's me. it's not. No. We should be able to trust in something, some sort of justice system to say, OK, that we can stand, we have a voice, that freedom of speech, how do we really practice it if we do not have the law backing us? So, as I said earlier, it's really disturbing that, you know, he, in mm -hmm. his position, would, kind of, yeah. would make that kind of pronouncement and on live nothing TV. Has been said. And nothing has been said to refute it. So the government has not said anything to say, well, and I take that if you don't say anything, that means so it's important. Is consent, yes, support. it's consent. Silence is also an answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, very, in this case, yeah. Very, very consenting. All right, so my story is a bit, um, because the Twitter 
Twitter, Twitter world <laughs> has been on fire with the hashtag World 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 War Three. <laughs> and um, Kasim okay. Soleimani is an Iranian military leader that was killed um, as a result of an order that the president of the United States. United States of America, Donald Trump, ordered, you know, an airstrike, and he was killed in that airstrike. He was killed alongside some of his. Um, would they call them militia group or whatever? Mm -hmm. So, and now the country leader, they've come out to say that that's um, Ayota, at Ayotola. Yeah, Ayotola has vowed. In fact, in his word, he said, "Hash revenge, revenge awaits the criminals." Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Pentagon are saying that Kazim and a force of his command, they were responsible for the death of hundreds of Americans. And the coalition since. So this is justification. You understand? For the yes. killing of well, this um, but you see, there are so many controversies. Like I said, Twitter is on fire because um, I don't know if we can pull out that video of Donald Trump. I think it was in 2011 when he was saying that um, um, President, then President Obama was going to um, was he called um, strike Iran uh, to show that that he his. It, as a show of his... As a show of his, what, like maybe re-election or whatever, yes, that he didn't have the capacity... Yeah, that he didn't have the capacity to negotiate, yeah, he, that he was a weak... He was insinuating that President was Obama was a, it was, it was a weak strategy for him to do that. And now... That's exactly what he's the done. The exact same thing. And we have an you, epic video of yes, him. Yes, an epic video of him saying that. And the exact same thing you accused, you know, then President Obama is what is, is happening exactly what done. clearly now. So now we don't even know where where we stand because a lot of what, people... What has Trump even said after all of this? Has he come out to say anything? Well, <laughs> we, haven't heard. You need well to we have the video. Maybe we should listen should to what he said in 2011. Our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. We have a real problem in the White House. So I believe that he will attack Iran sometime prior to the election because he thinks that's the only way he can get elected. Isn't it pathetic? So isn't it pathetic <laughs> that you are the one doing I'd like the to hear, I'd like to hear what like, he says you know, now. The funny he will definitely thing is that say something. He can't keep quiet. This was a... No, he said a lot. Go on his Twitter page. It's just that me, I don't have... You know me, I don't have energy <laughs> to relate what, you know. But go on Twitter. You need to go on Twitter to follow up. And people are laughing about World War Three. Please, it's if you've experienced... There's nothing funny, funny there's about nothing, any kind of there's, unrest. Yes. Even unrest. Little unrest. I, I live in... Even the effect it will have on the economy. I live yeah. in Kaduna, and I know what unrest means. Not to talk of this kind of war, the, the one that they'll be releasing nuclear weapons. Mm. So let's not even go there, please. Let us let us find a way because um, um, the Pelosi she has come out to say, please, we have entered one chance in this one, but please let us find it. Tell us how to quell the strategies this. and the measures you intend to to solve this problem because this is this is this is no, not catastrophic. It's, it's, it's not is, funny. It is, and you everybody know? should just. All right, we'll just leave it there because I don't know. We talk, we just thought to mention it. Uh, so today we're talking strategies and business. Welcome down. <laughs> Don't let Trump get yeah, to down. you. <laughs> so we have Uri Ngozi Chukuka. She will join us after the break. Please stay with us.